Greetings, fellow Crystal Gems. Tiki here. And Blue Dragon 5. And welcome to another anticlimactic episode of Tiki's Universe. Well, we hope it's not anticlimactic on your end. Yeah, what do you open it so negatively for? I know, right? <laughs> well, because I don't know. I don't know. But, so, folks, uh, of course, if you watched our, our recap of Lion 4 alternate ending, we kind of wove a tale of woe about why we are not doing the reaction videos uh simply put folks we are on thin ice with youtube uh we had a second video takedown just a day ago where our one of our steven universe videos was taken down for use of the audio and simply put folks we don't want to risk having the whole channel suspended or taken down and we don't want any more copyright strikes and also i figure just to keep it unified because tiki's universe like all the other tiki's universe stuff like star milo uh samurai jack etc kind of use the same sort of uh talking points and recap format so you know look the uh the reaction stuff was really fun while it lasted we got a lot of fun moments out of it and I'm hoping that maybe once the channel is in better standing, uh, copyright-wise, we can get back to that. Maybe in Season 5. Uh, all we need is the thumbs up. That's all we need from YouTube. We need the thumbs up from YouTube. We, we just basically just need to not have two strikes to our name is what we need for that to happen. But in the meantime, folks, we hope you enjoy our Steven Universe content regardless. Of course, it is a Steven bomb this week, so there should be some big stuff coming, but... Dragon, that big stuff was not in this episode, but we'll get into all of that. I mean, this episode, I don't know. It's funny because with Lion 4, I was more positive on it. Uh, and now I think you're going to be the more positive one on this episode. It's called Dug Out. So uh, let's get right into it, Dragon, after a brief musical interlude, if you will. All right. We are the Crystal Gems. We always save the day. And if you think we can't, we'll always find a way. That's why the people of this world believe in garnet, amethyst, and pearl, and, and Steven. <laughs> All right, I gotta say, Dragon, I am surprised that you didn't dislike this episode i got I'll, I'll put it that way because i don't know every time that onions involved you seem to uh you seem to have pretty you know pretty open opinions well and, that, and that's kind of where i was at too like i i mean look let's like i think greg mahesh warren not greg mahesh warren that'd be a twist um <laughs> that would be, be twist you lied to me i think doug mahesh warren is a fun character that's uh, me we're in that van of course this isn't the first time we've seen him but this is the first time he's been a focal point of an episode so it's kind of a good uh you know kind of character building episode for him have you said that, Dragon? I don't know. I, I think this episode's just kind of ho hum. I, I really do. I, there's really not anything special about this episode for me. It's, it's, it's pleasant. It's nice. Like, oh, hold on. Wow, I just realized we have the image from the uh, from the other episode. There we go. Okay, it's pleasant. Well, it's that nice. is embarrassing. Um. Yeah. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Uh, <laughs> I can fix it in post. Anyways. Uh. I don't know, Dragon. Like, I, I like Connie and Steven's dynamic, as always. It's nice to see Connie in, uh, in a big role here. I don't think this is nearly as strong as an episode as uh, Nightmare Hospital was, though. Which is kind of like the uh, mirror episode to this in a lot of ways, because that was Mrs. Mahesh Warren's big sort of uh, character development episode. Yeah. I, uh... I, 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 I disagree. I think this one was, uh, I think this one was a lot of fun. Okay. Okay. A lot of fun. Had a nice heart to it. But you're right. There's a, there's a lot of pleasantries which I, I did I did enjoy. And not just for the sake of their pleasantries. I thought it was really nice. It was really. Sweet I just didn't really think the episode had all that much of a point to it beyond just like getting to know this guy a little bit more. I which is think fine. It's, which it's is really fine. Funny. But I think it's really funny. I think it's got a lot of really great one-liners. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I do like uh, Stephen and Connie's disguises. Like Stephen is basically uh, what is it? Peter P Peter Pizzolopoulos. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Basically, and of like we have uh, Super Mario. <laughs> yeah, then we have uh, Veronica uh, Cucamonga, who is the off, uh, off brand Carmen Sandiego. 
Yeah, we're Kai San Diego. Kai <laughs> San Diego, yes. yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, going into the episode, uh, you know, we kind of, I, I, I do like how, and this is, a, I, I know Tiki has avoided watching the trailer so he doesn't get spoiled. Oh, uh-huh. yeah, really cool stuff. Uh, that, oh my God, there's something, there's something that teased in that uh, trailer. It's going to be, oh boy, I can't tell you, but it's, uh, it's thrilling. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, going to be teasing some episodes but uh, so you don't mind that this whole episode was basically just one big cock tease with an onion joke at the end because that's what my huge problem is with this episode well and to be fair I me mean, onions in peril so i don't have any problems with that so um get on the onion, onion in peril and you know some bad's gonna happen to him, so yeah it's, it's, uh, <laughs> that's why i don't have a problem with the i don't know I, the ending me. really grinds my gears dragon this is funny like we're we're kind of having like very polar opposite opinions on some of these episodes i think uh, interesting conversation, though. I really didn't like the ending at all. I thought the ending was a big cop out. I, I don't know. Tiki, here's the baffling thing. I have, I know, since you brought it up in the, in the previous episode briefly, uh, I, I really have no idea where that's coming from. I don't see it as a, it's a cop out. That's a huge kind of mystery tease of, oh my god, our, our big new characters have just appeared and they're absconding with. Some less good characters, and we know who they're working for, but still. I mean, I'm not saying the reveal itself isn't cool. I'm just saying, like, this whole episode just kind of feels like it's just us twiddling our thumbs. Like, I don't get the point of this episode, like, what we went through to get to this point. It's basically just well, Stephen and Connie and and Mr. Mahesh Warren just running around a carnival well, let, and shenanigans. Let me, well, let me circle back to the to, to the beginning because I think there's a structure that'll pay it off, and I okay. think you might see, you might see what might, might, okay. okay maybe. So the, I, our opening, which is what I was hitting, getting out with the trailer. The trailer starts like this. They they pulled this this clip. Basically, I think this ushers us into our new story that we're uh-huh. going to be telling with Stephen Bond, which I really did like, and I think pays off the ending a little bit more. But again, we'll get to that as we go throughout. But uh, we have Stephen and Connie essentially recapping the previous Stephen Bond over bits, which is really just cute <laughs> in itself. Just like, just kind of recapping, like, oh, yeah, all the crazy stuff, and Greg was in space. I would love to buy Fry Bits at Universal Studios or something like that. Like Fry Bits and Cookie Cats. <laughs> would that be great? I would love a cookie cat. Really <laughs> Seriously, if Universal Studios ever builds Beach City, like we could have, like you know, the fry bits. We could have the pizzas. You know, that'd be a great. Like, there doesn't even need to be a ride. It could be just like a shopping and dining area. <laughs> oh, seriously, if they, if they made like a little cookie cat, little you know, like the, the things right. Steve turned to the back, turned into a backpack with the cookie cats. Mm. We will put a mini cookie cat fridge. <laughs> right, right. That that would be cool. Anyways. <laughs> anyway, so uh, first of all, I, I love the uh, playing into the humor. So again, first of all, uh, the, 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 as I mentioned with the structure, in the front structure is kind of a nice kind of nonchalant way of saying, okay, well, we went through all that craziness, and now everything seems to be seems to be all kind of nice and passive. It's going to get back kind of one of our seemingly filler episodes seemingly filler but even if it's again i think we are developing character character we really have we've seen very little to nothing from before. you know what this <laughs> episode kind of reminds me of it kind of reminds me of the uh the mr smiley episodes with the neil with the neil gaiman doppelganger yes <laughs> yes with uh was it mr franny yeah mr franny i think yeah i mean it's like like on its own it's fine it's good character stuff but it's just like do we really need 10 minutes of this uh, well, I, I, again, I think it's I think it's somewhat lulling us into a false sense of security with that. It's like, okay, well, we're gonna tell a story. It just seems like we're kind of starting a kind of casually, kind of your your every everyday kind of you know, slice of life Steven Universe story. Like, okay, we'll hear some characters and beats. I guess structurally, there. maybe I wouldn't mind that ending so much if it was the ending to the first episode of a Stephen Bomb and not the second episode. I I think that's does that I make think, sense? Yes, I think that's kind of what I'm getting at, Tiki, is the fact that I think if you look at this as the start of the Stephen Bomb, it's 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 stronger. I hear that. I, I can understand it, your point. It honestly though. reads to me that the previous episode is more like an epilogue to our Rose stuff, and this is kind of taking us into the Steve. Okay, it's, it's yeah, no, you're, you're very right about that, because this is kind of like, and that happens quite a bit with Steven Universe, where, like, you know, we'll have, like, kind of like a wrap-up of the season storyline, and then, like, the last few episodes of the season will kind of, like, get us into uh, the next season stuff like and because you know, uh, like i said the rose stuff kind of started in late season three and carried on through most of season four yes and from what i've seen uh the uh the steam bomb to my understanding is going to continue through may which will take us into season five will take us into the next season um basically that. what's going on with the schedule at least right now and keep in mind this these things are always in yeah, flux. So 
again, that's another confusing element. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what's going on right now is we're going to get one episode a day for the next, uh, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. As per usual for Stephen Baum. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then the last episode of the week is going to be the season finale. And then, uh, and then May thirty May thirty first is when, according to Wiki, May thirty yes. first uh, is when the next new episode comes on. Exactly. And it looks like we might get another sort of summer Steven thing because, uh, according to Wikipedia, we have two episodes landing on May thirty first, and then another two landing on June first. So I don't know what's up with that. I mean, seemingly, it seems like we're, we're actually get, we're going to go into season five at a certain point. That's what uh-huh. it seems. To be. Well, yeah, I, like I said, the episode that that's airing on May thirty first is season five, episode one. There we so, go. Yeah. So, um, anyways, back to this episode. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so again, I I think they're really great like uh, lines here. I'll admit it's not perfect. I will admit because I I. Honestly, what we've had with, with Mr. Maheshwaran before, we've only had two gags with him. That's all we really got with his character, uh, along with one kind of descriptive line from Connie. Connie just kind of likened her father to a cop, so we may, we may have had a slight retcon. I don't know if he's if he's previously been employed by the police, and they just kind of he's kind of doing the, the security job at, on the side to kind of make well, ends meet. I mean, meet. if he's kind of a cop, I think a security officer is kind of a cop. I well, think I'm saying that's accurate. I, I don't know if if Kai said kind of a cop. I'm just I'm just making sense of that. But I'm I think uh-huh. she said he was a cop, and they might have retroactively made him a security thing. I'm just trying to liken that to maybe what's. Uh, if there's any story in between that. The point is, we've gotten that. We've had two gags, one about him not being a good driver in the snow, which is hilarious. Oh. <laughs> and, of course, like the, the glimpses we've seen uh, with him and Greg Universe and uh, when they all had the, the horrible fusion dinner together. Of course, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the, the fusion dinner that went awry, I should say. So, yeah, that's really all we've ever gotten with uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor Schwinn. So here we get some development with him. And I know it's just kind of a blanket statement for the whole episode. You know, the way we start off is, you know, uh, uh, he's wigging out Steven with the whole thing because he drives what looks like a cop car, you know, which is just kind of a security uh, security vehicle. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, all the years of ordering off menu. <laughs> the that they're hooks in me. Oh, just thinking, I think this it's so cleverly written, just so over it's so over the top in places. It just really it just really cracks me up how Steven's overreacting to, to Mr. Mayeshwin kind of pulling rank here. And honestly, Mr. Mayeshwin seems like a really likable, likable father character. He in, does, in, he in, does, in, yeah. in the vein of a Greg Universe type, which I am very which I'm very pleased by. Because Mr. Mayeshwin just seemed to be kind of the uptight guy. We never really mm-hmm. got to play with Mr. Mayeshwin. And uh, uh, Jacob Weil and I talk about Milo Milo Murphy's Law, and I must say the father on Milo Murphy's Law, Mr. Murphy, is kind of similar to Mr. Mahesh Warren in a way. Like he's just kind of like a you know he's a very well-meaning guy who's also very clumsy and you know sort of uh you know gets into a lot of trouble. So <laughs> honestly, what, what Mahesh Warren's characterization? Oh, by the way, I want to speak to this. I found this out after this because I knew I, there's something familiar about Mr. Uh, Mr. Mahesh Warren. Uh, the voice actor on him is someone I'm actually familiar with. It's a uh, 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 Crispin Freeman who uh, who was on Young Justice as as uh, Roy Harper and Speedy. Okay. Really, point is, really good voice actor. Sounds mm-hmm. identical to Christopher Daniel Barnes, but uh, <laughs> that notwithstanding, uh, I, another thing that really does for me this is I love the structure of uh, of uh, you know we have kind of a, a security stakeout premise of the episode, it's like a fun little adventure of like okay, so uh, he allows the kids to go on a stakeout, you know, which is again it's not like an actual cop. We, again, he's not an actual cop, but still it's like he's just watching a fence. I mean, they right, could feasibly right. come along without there being any danger. Just need to tell, hey. Don't go in there. That's really all he needs to do, and this the kids will be there. It's the, it's the hangout. He's, but he's going to oversell it because he wants to kind of live up to kind of the other, uh, kind of the other awesome things that the Stevens Guardians can do. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. So uh, I, of course, I, you know, we uh, will glimpse at Onion that dirty low, <laughs> <laughs> that dirty wall breaking scum one Onion loitering under a no loitering sign, Dragon of oh, the humanity. I hope he throws the book at him. <laughs> God. <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, see, I love. Here's another thing I really like about the Mister where he's really giving Onion the business. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. That is something we can all respect about him. Too. Way to go, Mister M. So again, it's overall Mister uh, Mister uh, He's really, he's, he's really fun. He's really a light guy. He makes like some fun jokes, and again, he seems like uh, they, they go on the stakeout. And, you know, we have like the undercover gag. He's letting them put on kind of the the evidence technically. Right. Uh, of course, they develop the uh, the uh, the personas, and again, I, 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 maybe it's like on a tasting. Why I really like this episode? We get some fun things like you know, I love some good flashlight stuff, <laughs> and we got a lot of really good flashlight stuff I, in this episode. I, 
yes, that is taste stuff, Dragon. Yes, yes, it is. I mean, it, it'd kind of be like if if Steven Universe had like a Polynesia themed episode, I'd be like, this is my kind of episode. <laughs> I'm just saying, usually in kind of your procedurals or your cop stuff, I love when we, have, when we kind of pull out the flashlights. You know, also in Batman Amateurs, whenever we get, we get cool lighting with flashlight stuff. I don't know, it was just kind of like, and also I guess it plays in just in terms of the connected to the security guard thing. It makes it really appropriate. At night, the museum, they always love arming him with the flashlight that he used it like a gun and was hilarious. <laughs> right. In all the movies, it just kept getting, not worse, it kept getting better and better how he kept just using it as like a handy weapon was awesome. And I love how we treat it like his gun here. Or <laughs> My favorite bit is when he reloads it with the batteries, like it's, 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 it clipped with his gun. I love that. <laughs> Uh, so again, I just love this kind of this PI stakeout vibe because we have this PI music cue of like it you was know, like a private eye sort of like you now bound. So it's like we're teasing the real mystery of the season with a fake mystery. Mm -hmm. And anyways, I love just how professional uh, Mayushrun is being while he's just still he's still kind of making a fun time. He's still really taking the job real seriously. It's kind of like going into the whole. Uh, you know, he's like he's a good like uh, he has really good lines like you know a good guard only needs a flashlight, which is an actual which is an accurate statement because you know he uh, you're a really good guard. You don't need a gun. You can just talk people down. And just kind of tell them you know they're going to respect. I'm pretty sure court. that's actually an accurate statement. Is that guards yeah. only are issued flashlights? Well, true. Well, some sometimes mace. I guess it depends not. on the on the actual yeah. like place. So, I mean, guards technically are allowed guns, but they have to be signed. I'm pretty off sure. I'm pretty sure the deal is that the uh, the flashlights the flashlights can also double as nightsticks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, of course, this last thing on the flashlight. I'm just gonna finish out the gags with the flash. We have the laws of physics gags. We have again. The, I I love this, the PI vibe. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, like, Dragon. Have you ever been in uh, one of those gravitron things? No, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> they like those things are really fun as a kid because you can kind of like climb on the walls and stuff. But then, but then when you're an adult and you know I'm like six foot two, and then it, you know you get stuck to the walls, just like ah, oh, this is really unpleasant. I gotta tell you though, thought they cross minders, a fight scene in one of these things would be amazing. Get on it, MCU. Get on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sp spider Man, put in the Spider-Man Homecoming, and he can stick to the walls as they're spinning Right, around. right. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm telling you, okay. there's the I've been, I've been dying. <laughs> Spider-Man versus the Scorpion. Let's do it at Coney Island. Let's put him in one of the oh stupid Gravitron things. Let's do, it, <laughs> Let's do it. All right. And dying for the Scorpion. Let's have him play by Bradley Cooper. Come on. Oh, God. I don't anyway, know about Bradley Cooper, I don't know about taking on two MCU characters. Josh Brolin, come on! <laughs> Josh Brolin is Thanos, and again, two MCU characters. That that, that doesn't help the Bradley All right, Cooper fine. thing. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm saying multiple Marvel characters: Thanos and Cable. Yes, yes, but but we're already cross pollinating enough. That's my point. Anyways, okay. we're. I, okay, okay, anyway, uh, <laughs> getting back to the, you know, we have like the laws of physics gag where he throws the, I, it, was, it would have been a really awesome moment if that flashlight actually connected and hit the button. It really would. That would have won all those awesome points. <laughs> right, <before>. right. <laughs> and you have the laws of physics baffle me. You know, they, it flings him right in the face, too. I mean, I don't get things that beat here. And, uh, you know, we have the, uh, I'm going to throw it at an angle. <laughs> Just, mm -hmm. I guess I, we have some fun absurdities. The fact that he's, he's uh, he, he knows he's just, he's trying to play it so serious, trying to make his job sound the most in, in exciting thing on the earth. And that, and that plays into the format. I'm really digging where, again, it's like like a PI thing of like, okay, yeah, someone's broken into an amusement park and like kind of an abandoned amusement park. You know, it's just, it's kind of a really cool old school setting. You know, it kind of reminds me of, it reminds me of uh, Scooby-Doo. That, that's what I'm saying. It's very, it's very kind of Scooby-Doo-esque, but with kind of a PI ved, uh, edge to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just it's kind of hitting those. I mean, I, I I agree with all your points. I just like I said, I I still think the episode just kind of neanders around a little bit. Like you know, it doesn't. There, like I like I I think the reason why I prefer uh, Lion Four over this episode is just because I feel like Lion Four has something to say, and this episode is just kind of like, all right, it's it's silly and funny. Here's, and here's the difference, though, Tiki. The thing that Lion Four saying, I've heard before. Or at least I heard before, or I don't really need to hear. So it's very obvious. Here is at least I'm having a lot. I'm having more fun with this one. We have great lines with delivered so so jokingly and serious. Where, well, you're destroying the sanctity of this land of fun. I mean, yeah, it's. 
I don't know, Dragon. I, I do like this. This might be one of the biggest disagreements we've had on a Steven Universe episode because I watched it twice, and yeah, what you're saying is all true. It is all fun, but again, I don't know. Like with with something like Steven Universe, I'm looking for a little bit more substance. I don't know. Now, of course, you have the flying pursuit where you have Stevens flying, carrying Connie, and then, of course, then the biz getting to the end here. Of course, the big reveal sure. that Onion was uh, seeming. I, I still say seemingly because I think a few of the few of those things might have been not Onion. But uh, we have, you know, Onion is cornered into an alley, and uh, I just wrote my notes uh, underlined and all that stuff. I knew it, you mother! <laughs> kick him! Kick him to Ishwan! You're so much taller! <laughs> kick him! <laughs> so I did write kick him with, the, with three exclamation points. Oh, God. Oh, God. Seriously, I just love this. Look, <laughs> see how tiny Onion was in comparison to Mr. Ishwan? Right, he, right. He punched him like a football. <laughs> would have made that. That, that would have changed your tune, I bet. But, uh... If they yeah, used, like if they did like the Charlie Brown gag with Onion. <laughs> no, but they actually have to kick. Them. Yes, yes, exactly. Except he actually does kick the football. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but Onion abuse aside, uh, so Mr. Mays were not. So yeah, just, I, I really do love just kind of this nice father daughter moment. It's kind of a great Father's Day thing. They ever if they could have timed it right, but uh, you know we have just kind of Mr. Mays were just feeling inadequate to kind of all the amazing stuff that kind of the crystal gems are doing without just you know just highlighting purely the crystal gems. You know, like, in comparison, there she's always hanging. Out with yeah, he even compares his wife. You know how his wife is saving people's lives at the hospital. Yeah, it just it says you know he's just tired of being thought of as you know silly old dad. And just the guy who like you know yells at loitering teenagers. <laughs> Well, in this case, onions. <laughs> but yes, uh, and this, I thought it was like it's such a, like an awe moment of like, oh, and you know, kind of something really reassuring to him. She says, she says, you know, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't need like you know, super serious or, or, or scary stuff. You know, basically, I don't need like end of the world type stuff every day. Having my silly old dad, it's a nice comfort to have. Which is, mm -hmm. and he says, oh, you're a keeper, Veronica. Uh, uh, <laughs> Comancha. Uh, yeah. Wait, was it? Uh, Kukamacha, Kukamacha, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, last thing I want to say about Miss Mason before I for, before I forget that before we just get to the big uh, cliffhanger in is that uh, I uh, I think the best way to describe him, like uh, I think I'm digging about his character is the fact that he's sort of uh, it, it's like kind of the the silly dad characters we've had in, like Dexter's Lab, but they're more self aware. I can see that, yeah. And I feel like the show in general is kind of like an extension of that sort of like 90s TV show vibe with deeper character complexities. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that that would fit right in. Yeah. Okay. And so, of course, we have their big ending, which uh, includes the uh, – so basically, as uh, they kind of let Onion off the hook. And Onion saying no when uh, these point to the point to the destroyed fence. I'm thinking the destroyed fence. I don't think Onion could have done that. Oh, I don't think, think, think so done. either. Yeah. I, I think, think that's that – definitely whoever – these people are, yeah. So, yes, we have mystery gems at the end. Mystery so, uh, gems. basically, as, as our guys Not go... Not just as, infinity gems, mystery gems! <laughs> <laughs> so, as, uh... So as our guys leave, they let him off the hook, and as daybreak starts, you know, because it's still really shadowy, kind of in the morning, uh -huh. uh, we turn around, and thankfully we're not just going to let Onion off the hook, we're going to torture him. Oh, God. <laughs> he is, uh... <laughs> the next episode is just going to be, like, like a 10-minute snuff episode with Onion. <laughs> oh, no, no. no. <laughs> just walk him away for a million years. <laughs> Uh, but no, he's uh, basically uh, these two gems are, are going to be important and most likely really creepy. My my assumption is that the uh, yellow diamond sent these to collect more humans, uh -huh. them, which uh, would be why we're going to have disappearing characters. We have the names episodes. for the gems if you want to know them. Uh, yeah, we don't know them yet, so let's not. I I I have them on Wikipedia, but okay. Uh, I have the plot summaries for these next three episodes, Dragon, and they would be very helpful for speculation, but at the same time, I feel like they're a little spoilery. Yeah, let's, let's, here's the thing that people should also know. Like, these episodes, at least for the next couple ones, they have been made available online, and of course yep. we have not watched yep. them yet. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> so that's, that's why like there's some spoilers. I think, actually. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I would have liked to know that, but, uh. Wouldn't really make a difference, I guess, in the long run. So. I, 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 I make a, you know, I make a kind of a, what is the word? A, uh, a point? No, a, uh, oh, God, I'm having a brain fart here. Jesus. And it stinks to high heaven. I know. Uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, let's say a point. Sure, I make it a point to not do episodes before they uh, actually air. 
Yes. Yes. Right. So again, it's the, the point is we have kind of a neat little mystery gem. And one's all blocky and one has kind of these bubbly wings and uh, most likely disciples of Yellow Diamond to kind of cheer up uh, Blue Diamond by kidnapping mm -hmm. more humans for the zoo, the complete, you know, uh, pink diamonds. Kind of I got to say, Dragon, I don't know how to speculate on this stuff without getting into the stuff that's in the episode summaries. That's going to be difficult for me. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, I was hoping, well, give me titles, give me titles, man. Okay, uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you the title and the summary for the next episode because the summary right. isn't spoilery. It's just the summaries for uh, 24 and 25 that are spoilery. Okay. Uh, next episode actually has me worried that it's just going to be another like filler episode. It's called The Good Lars. And uh, the premise is the cool kids invite Steven, Lars, and Sadie to a potluck. Steven and Sadie encourage Lars to bake a cake for the party. But Lars is insecure about revealing his baking skill. Now, doesn't that just sound like a fun time, Dragon? I'm being sarcastic. I tell you, I, I think we're going to keep seeing this kind of this mystery thing. I'm only I'm going to hope that the episode's entertaining so that when, when this does happen, we're going to, you know, I hope we're at least building something. Or this could be, like, part of the infamous Steven Universe pattern of just, like, a really mundane-sounding episode just having, like, a super intense ending or something like that. That's the thing. I think that's what we might be heading for. I think there's just the taste of it at the end here of, okay, well, we're going to end on kind of an ominous note, uh -huh. no star, no nothing. Well, unfortunately, Dragon, like I said, I do have the plot summaries, and I could, I, I like, I basically know what happens. Like, I don't know how it plays out, but I know, I, I pretty much know what the cliffhanger is going to be for episode 23. So I won't tell it to you, but yeah. yeah. But uh, I'm just saying, I think that's kind of a, uh, a direction to go. You know, so we're abducting people from Beach City, and I think eventually we're going to just kind of, we're going to investigate that. And I hope we don't keep stringing bringing the crystal gems along namely pearl i hope we get pearl soon i know right that, again that's another thing that kind of worries me is the fact that uh as much as i, I did enjoy this episode i still would have really enjoyed it far more if we had just a little taste of pearl dragon let me let me just uh uh the gems actually don't get mentioned in plot summaries until the season finale so it's actually possible it. that we don't see any of the gems until friday <laughs> <laughs> all right well folks uh as dragon said we're going to go through these episodes uh kind of talk through them piece by piece you know uh so we're not going to skip ahead so we'll be back tomorrow night to do the good lars i, I guess nah, maybe nah, we'll, we'll figure it out we'll figure well, out yeah we're, times times a relative thing yes it is yes it is but in the meantime dragon any final thoughts on this Again, just uh, the final thoughts. Again, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a fun, funny episode. It's uh, again, believe it or not, again, Onion. Uh, thankfully, he's ends up receiving it a punishment, so that's uh, it's, it's always kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we, again, it's just it. Uh, I think it's, uh, this is a good setup for the season. Better, I think it's a better setup for what we're doing this next Stephen Bomb versus uh, versus kind of the epilogue we had last time. It's. Uh, it was, it was nice to get to know Mr. Mayshorn a little bit. He was, uh, it was fun. Again, we had a little bit of depth with him, a little bit of, you know, good, some good old Connie stuff. Yeah, it, was a, it was a pleasant episode. The guy had some really good one-liners and kind of some fun stuff. It, yeah, it may not grab everyone, but it grabbed me. I like it. Okay. Well, folks, we, uh, we really do hope you're enjoying the new format and that you're not missing the reaction videos too, too much. Uh, we hope that, at least in this way, Jack, and I feel like we can at least talk about the episodes a little bit more thoroughly than we used to and not have that whole awkward, like, hey, let's talk about last week's episode before we talk about this week's episode. You know what I mean? Like, it, there's, some, there's some give and take with this new format that I think we're going to work out. Hey, remember uh, when we forgot to mention the pink diamond reveal? We remember that? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay, folks. But in the meantime, stay tuned. And we are the Crystal Gems. We'll always save the day. And if you think we can't, we'll always find a way. That's why the people of this world believe in Tiki. Dragon. And Steven. And beat and beat the pizzeria, mamma mia! I know that's not yeah. pizza populus. Beat 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 a pizza populus. I I, I don't know. <laughs> I just watched that. Connie San Diego.